So you're heading to your plastic surgeon for a breast reduction consultation. Some things you might be asking yourself. Is this covered by insurance? What will the scars look like? Will this affect my ability to breastfeed in the future? We will address these questions and more in today's video. Hi, I'm Ramon Garza. I'm a board certified plastic surgeon who specializes in complex breast reconstruction and aesthetic surgery of the breast and body. I make educational videos related to plastic surgery. Patients who come in for a breast reduction consultation often have similar complaints of neck pain, back pain, shoulder grooving, sometimes rashes under their breasts, and they want to know whether or not this surgery can be covered by insurance. These patients report a significant increase in their quality of life after a breast reduction surgery. In fact, breast reduction surgery has one of the highest patient satisfaction in regards to procedures that we do in plastic surgery. It's also a very common procedure. I do just as many breast reduction surgeries as I do breast enlargement or breast augmentations. So do insurance companies cover this procedure? Well, this depends largely on the state that you are in and the type of insurance you have. In Texas, most insurance carriers will cover a breast reduction procedure. However, there's a big caveat to that. Some criteria must be met in order for the procedure to be covered. This can mean documented rashes, shoulder grooving, back pain, evaluation by a physical therapist with sometimes a letter that is required to be written. Additionally, a certain amount of tissue must be removed in surgery for this to be considered a reconstructive surgery and not a cosmetic surgery. Not all states have these rules. For example, a colleague of mine who practices in Colorado only has to evaluate a patient and determine that that patient qualifies for a medical necessity breast reduction. They don't have to document rashes, they don't have to remove a certain amount of tissue, they just simply have to establish with their own opinion that the patient does require a breast reduction. That's not the case in Texas. It's interesting how all this insurance stuff works from state to state. Interesting and annoying. I'd love to be able to determine that my patient needs a breast reduction and have it covered by insurance. But again, in Texas, that's not the case. We have to get approval from an insurance company and we have to jump through their hoops. So how exactly does it work in Texas? When a patient comes to me for a breast reduction surgery, I evaluate the patient, I ask them what symptoms they're having, I ask if they've had documented rashes, if they've ever had to be treated medically for those rashes, have they been evaluated by a physical therapist? I then do an examination. And from my examination, I determine how much tissue I think I can safely remove from that patient and give them a result that they'd be happy with. So in my consultation, I ask, what cup size would you want to be in an ideal world? Say for example, a patient has a triple D cup and they wanna go down to a C cup. I might then estimate that I can remove 700 grams safely. From there, I will look and see for the patient based on their height and weight, what the insurance carrier requires me to remove. How do they determine that? They use something called a Schnur scale. A Schnur scale is a tool that different insurance carriers use to determine how much tissue I have to remove from a patient based on their height and weight. The interesting thing is not all insurance carriers use the same Schnur scale. So for the above patient, I estimate I can remove about 700 grams. The Schnur scale says I only have to remove 500 grams. That patient would qualify for a medically necessary reconstructive breast reduction, so it would be covered by insurance. However, if I see another patient who has a double D cup and she ideally wants to go down to a D cup, so only one cup size down, and I evaluate her and I determine that I can only safely remove about 300 grams uh, to give her the result that she's looking for, but the Schnur scale says I have to remove 700 grams, well, there's a disparity there. And that means the insurance company won't cover her procedure if I only remove the 300 grams. So for this patient, a cosmetic surgery approach would be better where we do a small reduction and we give her the cosmetic result she's looking for. So what about scars? A breast reduction surgery is very much like tailoring of clothing. When we nip and tuck and fold the skin and change the tissues around, we use particular scar patterns that will scar favorably and allow us to shape the breast into an aesthetic mound. For breast reduction surgery, we use a particular type of scar pattern for most patients. This is a scar that goes around the areola, 
straight down the middle of the breast and down to the inframammary fold or that crease where the breast meets the chest wall. This type of scar pattern is often referred to as the anchor scar, or the medical term for this is a wise pattern incision. These scars usually heal very well. Other scar patterns that are used sometimes include a lollipop type incision, where it is a incision around the areola and straight down. The medical term for that is a circumvertical incision. Uh, for patients who require a smaller type of breast reduction, we sometimes use that approach uh, to minimize scarring, but most breast reduction patients who are having a reconstruction insurance covered breast reduction usually require a wise pattern incision, at least in my hands. Remember, for the first three months, the scars will be their most red and angry, and over the course of a year, the scar will continue to mature and you'll get a nicer appearance. Some patients unfortunately have genetic or hereditary issues where they just don't scar favorably, no matter how well we suture their tissues. So if you have a history of poor scarring, let your surgeon know ahead of time. Additionally, if someone requires a significant lift with their breast, a lollipop incision may not be the best approach. And on that topic, can a lift be done during a breast reduction surgery? Yes. Next question. In all seriousness, a breast reduction and a breast lift are very similar in their approach. In fact, they kind of overlap. During a breast reduction, a breast lift is always done. The converse is not always true. During a breast lift, mostly it's a lift procedure and very small amount of tissue is removed, if any. So when you have a breast reduction surgery, a breast lift is done at the same time. One thing you should know and understand is that a breast lift does not necessarily increase the upper pole fullness. I sometimes have patients that come in and they want a breast lift or breast reduction and they point out to me that one of their goals is to have a lot of fullness in the upper pole. When we reposition the breast tissues during a breast reduction or a breast lift, the soft tissues with gravity just do not stay in the upper pole. They will go down to a more anatomic position which is that teardrop shaped breast. So if a patient really wants upper pole fullness, the only way to do that is gonna be with a small implant. And I try to avoid doing a breast reduction and placing an implant during the same time. Uh, but if a patient really wants that upper pole fullness, that's the only real way to get significant volume. Uh, one other thing we can do is a bit of fat grafting, which I find is very helpful. But again, it is not as powerful as an implant and it won't give you that significant upper pole fullness that an implant will. And how does this type of surgery affect breastfeeding? Most patients can still breastfeed after this surgery. In fact, about 80% of patients are able to breastfeed after breast reduction surgery. This is highly dependent on the technique that's used for a breast reduction but most plastic surgeons use techniques that maintain nipple sensation and the ability to breastfeed in the future. This is something you definitely want to discuss with your plastic surgeon if you plan on having children in the future. And on that point, when someone tells me that they plan on having future children, I often encourage them to wait if they can until after they have had their children and have completed breastfeeding. We usually recommend waiting until six to nine months after you've completed nursing your baby. This will give you the most predictable long-term results. If you do surgery too soon after you ceased nursing, you run the risk of developing a galactoseal or a milk duct cyst. To avoid that problem, it's best to wait. Lastly, let's discuss nipple sensation. Nipple sensation may be important to you. For some patients, it's not. And for some patients, they don't have very much nipple sensation to begin with. But if nipple sensation is important to you, as far as your sensuality, or just you like having good sensation to your nipple area, it is important to discuss nipple sensation with your plastic surgeon. There are certain techniques that can be done during a breast reduction surgery that can improve your nipple sensation. Most importantly is maintaining a healthy amount of tissue connected to blood supply, as well as nerve supply that maintains the nipple sensation and blood flow. Blood vessels and nerves run together. So by giving the tissue and nipple area a robust blood supply, you greatly increase the chances of having a good nerve supply with that tissue. By utilizing these techniques, in eight years of practice, I've only had a handful of patients that have reported numbness that didn't resolve over time in their nipple area. Most of my patients, in fact, report hypersensitivity in the immediate post-operative phase while tissues are swollen and inflamed. But once the swelling goes down, nipple sensation is usually restored back to normal. 
One technique that is performed during a breast reduction that will completely remove the blood supply to the nipple and sensation is a free nipple graft. If your surgeon is gonna perform a free nipple graft breast reduction, you need to understand that you will not be able to breastfeed and you will have no sensation to your nipple. This is a rarely performed procedure in my practice and only a select few type of patients require a free nipple graft breast reduction. These patients often have an enormous amount of breast tissue, in which case the other techniques won't be appropriate. But again, this is a very rare occurrence and most of my patients, I can do a procedure where we maintain nipple sensation and the ability to breastfeed. So if you're considering a breast reduction surgery, make sure you discuss these things with your plastic surgeon. If you like these types of videos, subscribe to our channel and make sure to check out our website. We have lots of useful information on there.